So welcome to the Treasury Elite Entrepreneur Series. I would like to thank all our viewers and members for supporting this noble cause of Treasury Elite, whose main objective is networking, knowledge sharing, and mentoring. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Abhishek Goenka, founder of IFA Global and Treasury Elite. We bring in world-class FX and Treasury solutions and automation for companies across India over the last 15 years. And today we have Mr. Sandeep Parik, founder and managing director of FinSec Law Advisors. Sandeep has worked as an executive director at SEBI and has been a faculty at the prestigious IIM Ahmedabad. He's worked for law firms in Delhi, Mumbai, and Washington, DC. Sandeep is admitted to practice law in New York. He's an author of a well-received book, Fraud, Manipulation, Insider Trading in the Securities Market. He's been acknowledged at the World Economic Forum as a global young leader. He's an independent director on the board of HDFC Bank, and he is the chairman of the SEBI's Proxy Advisory Working Group, is a member of the SEBI's Mutual Fund Advisory Committee. Welcome, Sandeep. How are you doing today? Very well, Abhishek. Thank you so much for inviting me. Glad to have you today as a part of the Treasury Elite Entrepreneur Series. In the next 30, 35 minutes, we would love to learn from your experience. Sandeep, my first question to you is, you know, I talk to a lot of global CEOs and entrepreneurs, and there's one common thread uh, between all of them that at, after one stage, it is not about the money. I would like to ask you one of the single biggest reason for you to get out of bed every morning and get yourself to work. What is it that drives you today? Or if, my, if I may ask, what is your why? So that's, that's a very interesting question because let me, let me start by saying that uh, the last three jobs I, uh, I switched, each job uh, pay was le- uh, lower than the previous one. Uh, so I think it's uh, pretty clear that... Uh, Money has not been a driver for me and it's for, for most people who kind of uh, do reasonably well. I, I think the, for, for me, it's, it's somewhat of a part of what, maybe, uh, what, uh, what it may be true for other people, which is passion for what you want to do. And for, for me, uh, it's really to do with the intellectual pursuit, which uh, is not unique in law, but it's kind of... Uh, very, very intellectual profession. And I, I love kind of doing the research. Uh, and uh, the, the, the part of law, which I'm, uh, you know, security is law is very equity and fairness oriented. So it's, it's not illogical like tax law, for instance. It's not, uh, it, it doesn't have contrived uh, theories uh, uh, beyond what is necessary. So it's, it's, it's intellectual, it's, it's uh, reasonable, it's uh, fair. And uh, I'm happy to help people every day kind of uh, go through the, the, the straight and the narrow. And uh, surprisingly, most people want to go through the straight and narrow. They want to do the right thing. Uh, and of course, um, it's, it's been a tremendous journey, both uh, you know, from working with the government, which is very rare in India, uh, unlike the West, uh, working in academia full time, and then uh, working in multiple uh, places you know, in, in uh, various law firms. Excellent, excellent. So, of course, you you started your journey in the U.S., you know, uh, and then you came to India. Uh, it was it was very different in terms of culture, in the terms of environment. So, we would love to know about your journey over the last many years, major highlights and milestones, and your three major learnings that you have picked up during your professional journey. So, so my kind of pre-journey started. Uh before I became a lawyer, which was while I was studying, I was working almost, uh, you know, most, most of the days I used to wake up at five o'clock uh, uh, for a gentleman who's now a very extremely famous lawyer, Harish Salve. Uh, so I used to be in his office by six, six thirty, and then work the whole day. And then we had evening classes. So I used to uh, work from virtually from 5 a.m. to around 10, 10 p.m. Oh. Uh, so those are kind of very formative years before I was a lawyer and I used to go to the Supreme Court most days. Uh, so we started from the top really, uh, which is uh, interesting. Uh, and then, uh, you know, after three years, then I, I went abroad. Uh, I did my uh, LLM as well. And uh, I worked for a law firm in Washington, D.C. Um, the key difference I would think is I think uh, law firms are more professional uh, far more professional in the West. The partnerships are genuine partnerships uh, as opposed to India. I think it's, it's still, we still have a kind of a promoter kind of concept even within law firms. So I think uh, they have evolved beyond that, which is why they're able to grow 
to sizes of you know tens of thousands of uh, lawyers uh, whereas we struggle to go beyond uh, handful um, so from there i think the journey has been uh, uh, it was a very very specialized role uh, i used to work mainly work for uh, not just securities law not just regulatory work uh, but uh, my partner my boss's work was uh, specialized in the broker dealer function so i was doing a very very small part of the anyway you know in in india securities law itself is considered extremely specialized so as as doing something just sub sub sub, sub specialization with uh, in us so it kind of gave me a kind of very uh, deep knowledge within that space and then when i came back of course it was kind of a grander uh, view of, you know you you can't just be a securities lawyer in india so you have to be doing a lot more many things which is of course a broader horizon so you you doing constitutional law at times you filing rates here and there um, you have you need to have a pretty strong foundation in contract law etc so uh, it's it is again uh, kind of relearning so to speak uh, in, in india and then you know uh, around 15 years back i joined sebi uh, at a senior role as you mentioned and uh, that was also very very um, very rewarding experience as, as you can imagine and it's very unusual uh, in terms of very few people actually manage to get in from from the private sector into the public sector um so uh, i was the first in i think sebi's history since since my time i they, they've been a couple more but uh, till i came in they only took in people from uh, other governmental bodies and public sector units so it was a very uh, it was a, and hopefully it was a good uh, two way street uh, I, i think the institution also got something out of me uh and the the job job profile was not so different you you would think that coming from a private sector law firm to a public sector uh, you know a regulator would be a completely different uh, job profile but actually it was and i was doing the same research i was doing the same kind of leadership roles i was managing people as kind of incentivizing people to um, push in the right direction so i think it was um, it, it sounds a lot more different than it was um, then um, uh, the two years of course i've been teaching for almost now, now 19 years at iima Uh, but uh, after sebi i took a full time job at ima so for the next two years it was kind of a cooling off because i'd be so conflicted in all cases if on the clients you know and you you don't you don't even remember where all you signed right thousands of files have come to you so i thought it, it's a good practice it's, it was not required but i thought it was a good practice to cool off so i taught for uh, two years full time uh, on on campus so it was again a beautiful experience the campus is beautiful if uh, you've seen it um and uh, after that really uh, it's been a, again a very interesting journey last uh, 10 years plus uh, at fintech law uh, we the idea was to kind of do uh, a niche of law which is very very specialized so even within securities law we 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 don't do everything really so we we look at the focus i mean we look at the regulatory aspects of uh, securities as opposed to doing ipos and rights offerings so anything which requires a lot of bandwidth and very uh, you know uh, more co- cookie cutter stuff uh, we we avoid we end up doing very intellectual stuff very interesting stuff so every day is a new day we no two days are alike in terms of what what we are required to do uh, and uh, uh, it's as i said it's it's been a very exhilarating journey very different things we have done uh, but uh, they actually sound a lot more different than they than they are yeah sure any any particular uh, observations or any particular experience that you had during this journey which which was an eye opener for you uh, i won't say an eye opener but certainly uh, the, the from my observation uh, i've seen that people who do really well in life are people who who love their work uh, i have yet to meet a single person who's successful who, who's miserable doing his job or her job so um, i think uh, that's that's the passion and the uh, focus uh, is 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 what really counts because if you if you passionate about something you it's it don't feel like work and you you don't mind kind of spending the extra time uh, you know committing to what what you seek, seek to achieve i think the other 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 aspect is really integrity i think uh, given that we are a slightly lower trust society than the west i think uh, we we do need read written contracts uh, we do need kind of uh, the safety of uh, uh, setting people up as uh, you know bilaterally uh, 
uh, in that scenario, I think it's very important to have integrity and you know, moving up for you, you can be street smart and and succeed for a few years. But if you really want to succeed in the long term, I think uh, uh, it's uh, it becomes critical that uh, people trust you uh, and you know whatever you say, you you not only deliver in terms of quality but also in terms of they should be able to say that okay, if Sandeep has said something, uh, he he'll do it the right way and he'll do it. Um, the, the 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 you know with, with the highest integrity possible. So I think uh, focus and integrity are the two things which uh, I think are uh, really important in success. And that's a very very uh, useful point that you made. Of course, focus and integrity, and that's something probably all the entrepreneurs who might talk they insist on focus, integrity, and hard work, and there is no shortcut to success. And probably it takes a long time, but probably it pays off handsomely at the end. So, Sandeep, uh, you have written extensively on uh, a fraud, manipulation, insider trading. You have seen the financial markets very closely, right from 92 onwards, and witnessed lots of ups and downs in terms of regulation and governance across Indian companies. What structural changes are you seeing in the overall financial sector regulations in India? And what are the best practices we need to adopt from the developed and matured markets like the US, UK, Singapore, etc. So that's a very interesting question, and it has kind of uh, multiple answers. And you know, some places uh, we have done extremely well. Uh, if you look at, for instance, stock exchanges, uh, we became electronic. In fact, uh, if, if you look at the commodities markets, as markets became electronic only three, four years back, fully electronic. Uh, so we, we've led the world in many aspects: uh, dematerialization of shares. Uh, U.S. still has a physical. They have a warehouse in which they sto store say, share certificates. So we have kind of leapfrogged many many areas. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, we have lagged behind in, for instance, financial inclusion. And when you talk of financial inc inclusion, it starts from banking, uh, you know, basic banking savings account, uh, down to uh, you know the equity markets, mutual funds. Uh, and we we've, we've had very rapid growth in the, in the past. Uh, Five or seven years, for instance, in mutual funds, but we still kind of we're looking at you know six percent of uh, uh, savings actually goes into equity markets directly and indirectly. So we're still a very far cry from 40, 50 percent where we should be sitting. Um, again, uh, as I mentioned, we are a low trust society, so we have a lot of scams. Uh, we have lots of sharp practices, uh, which which makes people even more kind of. Uh, uh, you know, they're afraid of the equity markets really. Uh, so how, how do you kind of create the right incentives as a regulator uh, so that investors are able to kind of say, okay, I can blindly walk in uh, and, and uh, not, not get cheated at any, any point of time. And uh, we are still, you know, uh, far away from a situation in which, you know, investors feel completely safe and secured that uh, there is, uh, there is not going to be any kind of, uh, crooked behavior with me. But at the same time, uh, the regulator has been very, very, uh, um, very ambitious in terms of what it's, it's tried over the past uh, decade or so, uh, trying to bring in systemic uh, methods in which uh, fraud can be minimized. So uh, I don't think SEBI can go after all the thousands of frauds which are going out and or tens of thousands of frauds, but they can uh, tighten the processes so that the chances uh, go down. For instance, you know, the last one year or so, they've uh, made dr drastic changes in uh, margins being offered by brokers. Now, those are, those are just kind of fine tuning in the in the engine of the market, uh, and uh, not really the classic anti-fraud uh, route of taking the stick and running behind the crooks. Uh, but it has a far greater impact. So you can't see it. You and I won't probably notice it. But uh, in, in in at the back end of the system. Uh, you know, the, there is less possibility of fraud uh, which can occur. Um, we, were, we are still a far, you know, uh, far way away from a very, very safe society in terms of the financial world. Uh, but, uh, at, and SEBI has taken the leadership in this. I, I hope other regulators also take a lead uh, in terms of uh, investor protection over the next few years. Uh, and uh, at, at some point, of course, as I said, we need to move from this 6% of savings rate to 30, 40% of savings rates uh, getting into equity markets. And that'll be great for the economy because uh, the economy also needs that capital to come into risk, you know, the, the risk risk capital 
part of it will go to msmes part of it will go to infrastructure so we need kind of we need to develop this entire uh, equity culture in india and i think it, it is happening but uh, we, we we need to make it uh, even more active so deep uh, my next question to you is that you know uh, you have been part of some prestigious boards like hdfc bank etc how has the thrust of discussion on the boards evolved and where, where do you uh, indian boards stack up in comparison with the global peers any thoughts on this no actually you answered the question <laughs> before you pose the question in terms of you know uh, the difference between the top companies and the you know you go down a, even a little bit uh, the quality of corporate governance changes dramatically so that is actually the unfortunate truth uh, and uh, the the level of corporate governance does indeed kind of go down with smaller companies and which is why you know there's there's a huge premium to the top most companies or the best best run companies so i think the day that really changes is uh, is is the day when investors will have a lot more trust in in the equity markets and they'll say okay i'm willing to see the the difference between the western markets and indian markets is you know they they know that somebody commits fraud you know they'll go to jail really correct um here you know that's not a given there when you invest in small cap uh, uh, companies you're actually taking a punt on that company doing well or not doing well may collapse you know 20 30% of them may completely collapse um, but you you can be sure that only a very small percentage of that will be collapsed because of fraud and you know related party transactions and stuff like that yeah in india it'll be a substantially higher percentage which is you know the 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 question you you the comment you posed earlier Uh, is reflecting the bond market right 95% of all corporate debt is either triple a or double a uh, and only 5% in all other categories put together correct and uh, just just look at the us markets is the exact opposite 5% is double a and triple a everything else is 95% so uh, we really don't trust uh, beyond the safest and uh, that comes out in bond markets in equity markets in all, all kinds of um even uh, participation in the equity markets really so uh, we we really need to build a higher trust society sure sure so uh, sandeep uh, what are the major innovations that you and your firm have undertaken to increase the revenue or the wallet share of clients simply have a culture of client delight thought leadership and research while maintaining profitability yeah so i think uh, It's, it's always been all of the above because uh, we really believe in uh, doing things way better than our competitors uh, because uh, we realize we are small in size uh, we have you know uh, all our competitors large firms are kind of some of them are thousand lawyers plus so we competing with uh, bigger brands so to speak uh, and there is absolutely no reason for any client to go to come to us rather than to them Uh, if we provide similar levels of or even slightly better levels of service people really have to be really really happy and our our service quality has to be substantially higher than uh, our peers for us to actually get get clients and and uh, the kind of clients we attract is actually the, the the most premium clients we don't kind of unlike other smaller law firms we don't cater to the mid, mid market we advise almost all the big banks almost all the big uh, brokerages uh, uh, all almost all the stock exchanges um, uh, self regulatory organizations um, trade bodies etc so we 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 kind of play with the big boys in terms of quality and we the only reason people come to us is because we provide a higher quality compared to our peers and uh, we do that by simply by being ahead of the curve we are uh, on average we spend uh, between 20 and 30% of our time doing policy work Uh, so whether it's uh, of course various committees that i sit on uh, common letters that we send to regulators our kind of informal interaction with uh, regulators and the government are um, are are we have thought leadership programs we have a monthly con call series we have a newsletter uh, for for a firm which is our size you know we we do things which uh, firms which are like 10 20 times uh, our size would would be doing in terms of thought leadership so we are uh, frankly ahead of the competition uh, in terms of policy stuff and often we kind of uh, we we end up writing some of the policy that you 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 see 
come out of regulators directly indirectly etc so that that gives us an edge when somebody calls us we know you know the background we know the history we know how regulator the regulator would look at that um and uh, you know we we still pretty conservative when you know we we don't give random advice uh, so we we are very conservative uh, but still clients kind of value that conservative streak uh, where we you know they they don't want to take risky action they want to be kind of uh in the very 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 safe uh, arena uh, and and as as you probably fairly very with reading papers every day there's kind of some minor uh, you know uh, mistake somebody does and they they kind of trip up on some regulation or other other, other. so it's 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 uh, becoming a, di- a bit difficult even for honest people today uh, and hopefully it's become much more difficult for crooks today one life changing personal experience for you and how did you evolve post that if you could share one of the experiences which really changed the way you think look at the world or brought in a substantial transformation in you so i think the, there are multiple but i think one thing which really comes to mind is uh, i think uh, when i entered sebi uh, i came in with a bit lot of bravado so you know the private sector kind of way of doing things fast and efficient and uh, you know you and me don't look at processes as uh, a public sector person does and uh, frankly you know people like us think that processes are just created to you know improve increase bureaucracy and red tape um, and that's that's the kind of uh, uh, mindset which I, which i went with uh, saying that okay we need to move files really quickly and all that and uh, there are lots of times i used, I used to just you know sup- when a file comes to you is actually supposed to send it down all the way to the bottom of the of the rung and you know it goes through the entire institutional process uh and i i would think that okay this is kind of such an easy answer why do i need to send it down to the to the ranks uh, i just need to kind of give my view and send it back um and and i realized that was the wrong way to do it uh, i think processes are really important uh in uh, in any large organization but especially so in a you know in a governmental body uh where you need to create the institutional memory number one uh number two you need to uh, you know take your team along with you uh number three uh the whole idea of uh, you know creating the process also protects you this is you know some somebody uh, luckily of course i have not faced that but uh, some of uh, some some of the people in regulatory services have faced scrutiny that why do you take so so decision what is the hurry i mean that that question could have come at me uh and luckily one of my colleagues that said he said uh, don't do it in this manner this is this is not the right way to do it and i kind of got, i got shaken i got uh, shook up a bit uh, because i said okay i'm looking at efficiency i'm looking at cleaning up processes uh and there's this uh, uh person telling me that that's that's the wrong way to do it so i rethought it and in fact uh, it it made a lot of sense and of course i did slow down i kind of did respect the process a lot more and uh, of course that that has uh, stayed with me in terms of how uh, uh, i do work even today give me a one fun fact about you which people do not know apart from uh, rock climbing which was your earlier passion <laughs> so yeah so rock climbing and kayaking were my early passions um, i used to do that i was uh, pretty good in actually kayaking and rock climbing um, i used to climb on walls actually in, in regular buildings so i used to climb my own house's walls oh um, awesome. yeah 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 so i was um, uh, i never made it to the state state list but i kind of uh, almost reached there um the fun fact about me uh, is i think uh, my last four, four four job changes have each resulted in lower pay <laughs> 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 so you know from private sector to sebi to ima and then you know when i started fintech i was i was in actually literally in debt <laughs> so it was uh, but it is each one was kind of more interesting than the than the other and it's very very it's been a, a whirlwind of a life and uh, absolutely no regrets in uh, any of the professional decisions i've taken of course but you but you feel fulfilled that's most important i think <laughs> in a long run absolutely i think that sense of uh, achieve something uh, make makes it worthwhile you know and, and just having colleagues who you respect who you 
and and even within fintech i think i have always hired people who are smarter than me so it's it's been a uh, you know it's been a great team uh, uh, and uh, it is great to work with uh, people who 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 you admire so in fact my 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 earlier question i also wanted to ask you that when you hire people uh, in your firm so one thing you said that you you hire people who are smarter than you what else do you look into a, a professional people while you are hiring no so i think this simply uh, teamwork uh, and uh, we typically don't hire blind which means we we normally pick up people from our internship pools so which means we seen them they seen us they they know what we do we know what they do uh, how they do uh, whether they work in a team well uh, and really very very research focused so you know if yeah uh, if you want to do good cookie cutter stuff uh, we are not the right place uh, but at the same time you know we we don't uh, we expect people to work hard at times but it's it's not 18 hours a day like an mnd lawyer so it's it's kind of uh, um, better work like balance compared to uh, a kind of uh, an ipo or mnd kind of lawyer great great sandeep sandeep it was a wonderful conversation with you uh, i'm sure all the people who run professional services firms have definitely gathered a lot of learnings through this conversation you are focused on thought leadership research and uh, you know looking into minor things while giving advice uh, with a conservative approach your 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 thoughts on overall regulatory environment in india corporate governance and how it thing needs to change change and some of the major innovations that you take in your firm was uh, uh, i'm sure which it will add a lot of value to all the people who are watching this today i wish you and fintech law advisors a very very bright future and all the people around you in the firm around in the family a very safe and a bright future ahead thank you so much sandeep for your time it was lovely interacting with you thank you so much abhishek for having me here and uh, uh, still may you stay safe and 